block is an electrically isolated track section that can be independently operated. Okay, before I install my fifth block, I want to explain why I need that fifth block in my four block system. I didn't really think things through and my brother and I tried running two trains at the same time and it just didn't work out too well. And here's why. Currently you'll see in front of you the four block system. Yellow track is block one and that means all this track with the yellow markings is one block. It has power to this track, this block. Block two, the orange, all power goes here when block two is, is on. Block three is the inner loop. That's with the bridge and the risers. And then block four is access to the turntable. So that's four blocks. Get the power shut off the block one, no trains can operate on this yellow track here and so on and so forth. So let's put some trains on. We have train A and train B. Uncle Mark's train, Uncle Mike's train. So, for instance, we have block two power on. So let's say uh, cab A, okay, Uncle Mark, he has power the orange track and if both trains are on the orange track then he has control of both trains they go at the same time so unlike DCC the power cab does not have control of just train A he now has control of both trains because in DC the power goes to the track so if there's three trains on those orange track, all three go at the same time, all three stop, all three reverse. So the idea with blocks is that you want one train on one block, yellow, the other train on the other block, the orange. So what was happening was, for instance, my, bro my brother Mike would be on the orange track with his train, I'd be on the yellow track, and I would stop. This is where the power cuts off. I have a plastic joint here, which I'll explain later. I would stop here. I would wait for my brother to come off to the end of the power block, block two, and he would stop right here. Because if he were to, well, he can't drive any further because I have control of this yellow track. So even if he went full speed, the train would stop dead here. So my train's over here, I have power to the yellow track. So what would happen is, I have power to yellow, he has power to the orange. We switch, so I can have power to the orange and he has power to the yellow. Great in theory, but once we switch, my train is still on the yellow. Which means he's controlling my train now, and I'm controlling his train. So it didn't work out. I have to install on a block right about here so that he can probably cut off the orange and let's call this the black block I'm gonna put a install a block today right here so that now this fifth block will be a good holding area for the second train. So now I'm controlling the yellow. I stop. I wait for him to come off block two. He has now control of this black block. He's coming in. I'll hit the switch for the orange block, block two. Now my brother has no control of this block, but I do. So I come onto the orange. And he's still coming on this black block, and he makes the switch to control the yellow block, and he can come through. And I can hit the switch for the blue block, and I can come in the inner circle. And again, he comes around the yellow block, block one, and he waits, because I still have control of this orange block. He waits till I come out around the mountains, over the bridge. So I'll have access to the orange, come out, into my neutral zone here, 
because I hit the switch for the I have control of black. He switched the switch to have control of the orange, then his turn to come into the oval. So today I'm going to install a block here. I already have a plastic joiner here, so I'm going to install a plastic joiner here to create a fifth power block here. I'm also going to st install um, some terminal joiners to give power to, I believe, this new orange block. Okay, so the first step we're going to do is install these plastic insulating rail joiners. I bought some from the Hobby House and they look like this. So we just need one of these plastic joiners. Not cut the power off. And thankfully I didn't glue my track down, I just pinned it down. In anticipation of taking out to make adjustments. I chose the inner rail here as my gapped rail. A gap is an electrical break in the rail. In a common rail system, the gap would be the control rail. I'm going to gingerly Okay, Ooh. I'll take that one away. And these plastic joints are a bit tricky because they're stiff. I'm going to slip it on. Voila. So my plastic joiner is in to make my gap rail, which means now I have block two, remember it's my orange section, and once the train or the cab passes this, it's now in the black zone, which is block five, power to this new block is already put in here, which means this new improved block 2 has no power. So, that's the next step. You'll notice currently my terminal joiners are kind of sticking out here onto the roadbed. Thanks to a good YouTube friend, Vinny, he said, why don't you put your terminal joiners on the inside so that the wires don't show and then the ballast will cover the inside. Well, I tried that, but these are a bit too long and they hit each other in the middle and raises the track and I don't really want to damage this, it's very delicate. And I don't have a soldering iron yet so I can't fix them. So here's my train of thought. Train of thought. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side, put it to the inside, and then take the other side and move it along to the next connection here and put it on the inside. Install my terminal joiners back here. So I've taken the track out carefully. Now I'm going to drill some holes so I can feed the wires through. I'm using a 5 and 32's drill bit. It should be big enough. You don't want it too big and you don't want it too small. You want the hole right between the tracks. And I really should remove this turnout so I don't damage it, but I'm living on the edge. I bought some terminal joiners on eBay. You get two in a package. Next, I'll strip the plastic coating off the wire so I can attach it to my black wire and then run it to my control panel. I'm just going to twist my wires here to make it one. Feed the terminal wire through the hole. Pull it through.
my terminal joiner is connected to the inside rail. So it's power going to the gap rail. And over here, I have my terminal joiner on this side going to the common rail. A common rail is the rail in a model railroad layout without electrical gaps. So now block 2 has power once again. These are my two terminal joiners. I'm going to label one of them inside rail and that's going to be important because one wire has to go to my block switch and one has to go to the power. And for today I'll be using this Atlas layout wire. So I've stripped both ends of my black Atlas wire. That's the terminal joiner. And I'm going to twist them together to make contact. And I think down the road I'll use electrical tape. These are all my common rails and there's five. Because right now I have four blocks. So that's four common rail wires. And the fifth goes to my Atlas controller right there. So that one wire goes down and connects to all four of them. So I'm going to connect my new terminal wire to this pack making six. Okay, done. Now we have six wires going to the control panel. And the other part of the terminal wire, the gap rail wires, come right here. So this is wire one for block one. And now we're going to add the other Atlas selector. The Atlas selector is a device that enables the independent operation and control of two trains at the same time. I'm going to add a fifth block here. Connect this to the, the pack. And I'll connect this wire to my fifth. Now I'll connect the selectors using spade connectors. A spade connector is pretty obvious, am I right? Okay, nice and secure. And down the road, I'll screw this to the table so that it doesn't move. So for back to the diagram, block one is now the yellow, block two is the orange, block three is the new black section we added, block four is the inner loop, and block five is the turntable track. Okay, let's test it out. I have all the blocks shut off now. Well, technically they're on this control cab here, B. But I'm going to run B. So all the power now is going to to B. And I have it at 75 and the train's not going. So once I give power to block A, it goes. And it should stop right about there. So I give turn on block two. And then it should stop right about there. And then I give power to block three. I should still keep going because I have I still have block one on. So now I'm gonna try block four. I'm gonna turn the switch. And it should stop right about there. Turn on block four. Now it's in block four. And if we run it into the Turntable section should stop right about there. And we'll turn on block five and it runs. Great, everything works. In the future I'd love to have a light or a signal system for the, the blocks so that when train A comes up here, there's a red light telling train A that train B is using this block and can't go. And then when this block's open, the light turns green and then the train A can go in. But that's down the road. I'm glad I have my five blocks in now and my brother and I can run trains happily.